Hi, this is Dana Gould. Don't be alone with Jay Kogan. Don't be alone with Jay Kogan. That cheesy noise says it's time once again for Don't Be Alone with Jay Kogan, a podcast about being connective in a disconnected world. Um, I am your host, Jay Kogan, and some might say, why do you have a podcast? And I have no answer for that. But I do say that um, if you have a comment or a question, feel free to write it in at uh, Don't Be Alone with Jay Kogan. That's D-B-A-W, Jay Kogan, uh, J-A-Y-K-O-G-E-N at gmail.com. I will answer your viewer, listener mail, any questions, any comments, any criticisms. I will throw them on the pile with my wife's criticisms and everybody else's criticisms in my life. Um, I'm here today. Uh, I have a guest who talked in, the, in a bit, but he's uh, uh, Dana Gould. He's a very funny man, also has his own podcast, and he has a premium level um, that you can purchase if you're, a, if you're a fan. And I have a premium level that I'm going to offer now, two levels, one if for a dollar, is if you uh, sign up for uh, Jake Hogan at, I guess, uh, 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 one of those websites, uh, 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 p- pander, pandering.com or something like that. I don't know what they're... Anyway, you can... The, I'll figure it out, but the premium level would be uh, uh, me. I'll, I'll, you can have my uh, uh, an 8x10 glossy of me for a dollar. And then for the, 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 the higher level, uh, we are going to Brazil. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Petco. Uh, it's Petco. Uh, all right. No, Dana's showing me something. You can yes. say the word. I'm not talking. It's Patreon. Oh, uh, Patreon. Yeah, Patreon. For dollar, you get an 8 by 10 uh, glossy of me. And then the next level up is uh, is a uh, individual trip. We can go to Hawaii. Full level, uh, four seasons uh, for a week at Hawaii for that level, which is uh, $820,000 for that level. So if you're the dollar level, great. The $820,000 level, you get much more. It's totally worth it. Um, so we'll see. Anyway, um, I brought Dana in here because I wanted to talk about something that's been on my mind for a little while, which is um, I am in the, uh, in the later half of my life. Uh, I just turned 60. And what I am at 60 is different than what I was at 20. Although it felt, it felt like one big thing. Like 20 to 60 feels like one big thing. And I am uh, changing. And my career is changing. And my, who I am to my kids, is, my kid is changing. Um, and who I am to my wife is changing. And what my life looks like for the next foreseeable future, which doesn't seem all that long. Like 20 years, what have I got? Maybe if I'm lucky, 20, 25, 30. So... I have to embrace some things that are changing, some of which are a real ego death. I was the wonderkind. I'm no longer the wonderkind. I was like the young, hot comedy writer. I'm still doing fine, but I'm not the young, hot comedy writer I was. Uh, my kid has grown. He doesn't need me anymore. Uh, my wife is still puts up, <laughs> tolerates me, but it's not that hot relationship that we once had. So how do we adjust to becoming who we're going to becoming and embrace saying goodbye to who we were. And that's why I brought in my very thoughtful and good friend, Dana Gould. So, Dana, thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, having me. And- Dana is a comedian. Everybody knows. He's been uh, making us laugh for 30 years. He's been a comedian for 40 years, but he's been making us laugh for a solid 30 years. <laughs> yeah, and so thank you for that. That's about right. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and you were uh, an actor, and you had your own shows, a Stand Against Evil, and a writer on The Simpsons and mm-hmm. many other things, as well as uh, having your own podcast, uh, The Dana Gould Hour, which is, I must say, something I'm a big fan of. Oh, thank you. And I listen to all the time. And um, it's not an hour, guys. You listen it, to it once a month. It's 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 <laughs> yeah, but I've listened to it for years. So oh, thank you. Yeah, and and it's really long. So all the time is not. It's, it really is a long thing. It's gross. There's so much content <laughs> in it. It's, it's gross. unbelievable how much written produced content there is like I come in here with nothing prepared and you come in with everything prepared. It's very silly. Um, and also hanging with Dr. Z is mm-hmm. a great show that you have. You and Rob Cohen is sort of put together. And Pete Aronson. And Pete yes. Aronson. Uh, and uh, it's this really funny show that you can see on the YouTube. Yeah. Uh, with uh, you dressed uh, as a, as a Dr. Zayas. Yeah. Uh, or a, yes, or a, a monkey. Uh, we can say it. we can say it. Okay, <laughs> Doctor Zayas, uh, and a you, simulcrum, right? And a 
Uh, he's uh, that this character of Dr. Zayas is sort of an old time Hollywood uh, uh, 60s, 70s uh, bon vivant. Yeah, he's like Sammy Davis Jr. Yeah. It's so like Planet of the Apes was a movie he made, but he's had a long career. Right. And so he's like he's ensconced in show business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd m just as likely to see him uh, at Chasen's as you are at the <laughs> destroyed Statue yeah. of Liberty. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's like Peter Lawford in 78. Sure. You know, just knows everybody. Right. I love yeah. when when you were a kid, didn't you wonder why Peter Lawford it was a name that you knew? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. like, how did I? I know who Sammy Davis well, was. Well, then, like a lot of kids, my favorite movies were Star Wars, sure. Planet of the Apes, right, and Salt and Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> sure, that's what you do. Those, those are the big three. Um, so, uh, so Dana, you and I are—I'm a little older than you, but we're of similar ages. Yeah, you're not that much older. Uh, how do? you adjust to becoming who you are now and maybe even giving up some of the dreams you had in the past where do you, where do you where do you fall it's something that you it's like any form of growth you don't see it while it's happening but you see it after it's happened like oh i don't like i i, I give you a microcosm mm -hmm. example i was at a I was at a hot Pilates class. Okay. All right. <laughs> sure. Because and, the cold Pilates. Well, that's yeah, no good. No, it's not a, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, but, but because I don't, I'm afraid of growing old. Like I'm sure. exercising and just trying to stay limber. Sure. And mm -hmm. um, my wife is younger than I am, so I have to keep up. Yeah. And she's talked about leaving you a lot. <laughs> Dana doesn't stay Wait, fit. She, she's in town. <laughs> You've seen her. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and there were two. It's and it's me and a bunch of women in their twenties and thirties. Right. <laughs> okay, but uh, but I don't. Because that's I, who care, takes care of themselves. That's who. Yeah, and that's you who and a bunch of Sure. Yeah. yeah, I went with my wife, and then mm -hmm. uh, and. And 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 uh, they know my name. Okay. Like I go, uh, you know, I'm just hi Dana. Right. Uh, I'm just like the weird old guy that doesn't sure. make eye contact. Right. Uh, you're not allowed to look at people when you're in that class, right? People stretching. No, I don't, I'm. Yeah. I'm so tunnel vision. Right. Yeah. And these are literally like my daughter's friends' age. No, I'm no, but like, it's like yeah. one of those. I'd be very self conscious about yeah, being. Yeah. 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 Hugely yeah. self conscious. Yeah. But I was listening to two young ladies in the parking lot talking after the class to get my car, and I realized that one of them, at least, was a comedian. Okay. And they were talking about this, and then we're going to the Edinburgh, and I was like, just got in my car. But I was like, yeah, of course they have no idea who I am. Yeah. I was, oh, I said that because yeah. the, I mean, they might know my name. That was a right? conversation you would have been involved in. Yeah. Ten years ago. Yeah. Okay. Or, interesting. Or, or just like, and and I'm and I am now old enough to to to. No, not to go, hey, I'm a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they don't care. Yeah. <laughs> they don't They care. might. They uh, might. It's yeah, a, in a different situation. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it was, yeah, like they don't, th right. that's their world now. Sure. And you kind of have, uh, a, a, I have like a, a boutique career. I, I do the stuff that I do because I like it. I'm not competitive in any way because I can't be. Right. Okay, but yeah. there was a time when I was you were competitive. Oh my and god! You were, yeah. and, and you wanted to, you know, when? find your way on the late night talk shows and get your own show and do a lot of things that that, that people do. People so, told me I was going to be hugely famous. <laughs> right. Okay. And you are. By the way, people. Not, by the way, that I was paying. <laughs> right. You're not unfamous. I'm not people, unfamous. People know who you are. Yeah, and, and, a, and you've built a I'm career. A Roy Clark level of fame. <laughs> Roy Clark used to send a bucket of popcorn to my family at Christmas. Just saying. See? So being famous like Roy Clark is, in my that, book is being awesome. That's phenomenal. Yeah, just, I don't know why my dad worked with Roy Clark at some point. I don't know. And he got on a list. He got, and, uh, he got on a list. And he list. got on the popcorn, big popcorn tin bucket list. Picking, uh, it, picking and a grinning. But, okay, so, so yeah, you were going to be these, do other things. And you did do a lot of those things. Mm -hmm. You made your, took your shot at some of those things. Sure. And you got to direct stuff and rate your own. TV series, some things you yeah, may not have very, very, very may lucky. not have yeah. even been in the plan, but then you wind up doing anyway. Yeah, I fell, in, I fell. In, you know, I started off doing stand up, and what I wanted to do for I wanted to be a stand up since I was about fourteen years old, and my what I wanted to do is I would become a stand up, and 
be, then I would become such a famous stand-up that I could become an actor. <laughs> and then I would become so famous as an actor that I could write right. my own movies and they would and I could be in them. Right. Because I only wanted to write horror movies and be in them. Right. So I took the most circuitous way. Right. Instead of just and, writing a horror yeah, it's movie. Like, yeah. I want to be a sous chef. Right. And if I'm elected to the United States Senate, <laughs> I can demand to work in any sure. restaurant. I get it. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I went to the most ridiculous but now here, way to do it. Here you are. Here I am. Let's talk about me for a second because sure. I'm fucking sick of talking about you. I, you and me oh, both, Jesus my friend. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, I've had shows on the air, but they haven't been wildly successful. I have not made uh, Chuck. I'm not Chuck Lorre. No. I'm not, um, you know. You I know. would say that uh, you and I are uh, successful journeymen. Yes, exactly right. Yeah. And, and. That, in some ways, is a disappointment, and in other ways, is just fine. Yeah. So yeah, so, and and more than fine. Yeah. Like when you look at when you take a step back, right? Um, and realize a lot of people aren't. That's right. You, you know, know, we're 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 comfortable we're, and we're we've and got lucky. a certain amount of happiness, yeah. and mm -hmm. and uh, and you've got wonderful children, and I've got a great kid, and yep. we've got all those things, but it's it's. Also, when TV staffing season comes around, I'm not on top of the list anymore. And, <laughs> yeah. that's, and that's something that's, that's really like I used to be, yep. and I got really used to it. And now I'm not used to not being there, and I have to adjust to the idea that maybe I'm not that good. Or maybe I'm not, maybe I've worn out my welcome or something along those lines. And yeah, so, they, it's, the kids are listening to different bands. That's right. You know, and it's... Uh, I my I have all, I was never as much of a staffed writer as you were. I was on shows, but I I did too many other things um, to really build up that to be on that list. Um, I mean, I but I you got there. You're I there. Did, yes, I did. But yeah. like I I have always had the thing of like I want to write on a show. Great, invent a show. <laughs> You right. know, and that's right. that's always been, you know, do you want to be in a movie? Great. Right. Build a camera, fund a studio. Well, and... one of the first things we did was a pilot you wrote called World on a World String. World on a String. And uh, The Late Lamented. Yeah, it was great. Uh, it was great. Really smart, really funny. No idea why it didn't get picked up. I think we didn't have a director oh, who know. helped us. Oh, I know. Oh, what happened? Well, I know we didn't I know we didn't have a a director. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. it's you know it's a terrible day when the cast is sitting at the table for the table and the director comes in and goes, "Oh, a dog got killed by a coyote." Right. Yeah, but 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 anyway, the, you're caught in the changeover of Peter Chern, uh, not Peter Chernin, but uh, Peter Roth. Peter Roth came in and, and inherited it. Right. And he said, "I don't and want that." It stuff. scares me. Yeah, that's it awesome. scares me. Oh well. Any, but any, but here's the thing: you did write for yourself, and you wrote a really interesting, cool show for yourself, mm -hmm. and it was a, it was a, a good swing, a good swing, a good solid swing. But yeah. it didn't didn't land. Right. And as a like, and you've been doing that for you know bits and pieces for your whole I, career. I think pretty much everything I've done is yeah. that. Uh, you know, it's uh, my stand up. I'm a very well respected stand up. Yeah. And I'm very proud of my work, but I never got out of the clubs. You know, I don't do theaters. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm still in the clubs. I, you know, I had a TV show on IFC that, right. you know, as Bobcat Goldthwait says, the witness protection plan of television <laughs> networks. Right. Like, right. you know, and, uh, you know, my, uh, everything I've done, I, I, but I've come, I am at peace with it now where I'm a, again, like a boutique guy. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't. I my podcast could be huge if I talked about how hard it is to be a white man today. You know, <laughs> right. and uh, you know, right. if there's right. uh, if if our culture, Jay, yes, has ever had a victim, <laughs> it's the white man. It's the white yeah, man. I agree. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, and like, but I could put on that mask and right. tell. I mean, I would never do. I have a soul, but yes. but but you know, but I know it's like, yeah, I could do that. If these I've, minorities have had a good two or three year run, <laughs> I think it's over. You know what? Yeah, they've been at they've it. Had it. They've had it pretty had it, sweet yeah, for a couple years. <laughs> since now, come on. Since Avengers Endgame came out, <laughs> they've been really riding. Now it it's time for the white guy to yeah, really get a chance. Need a ch so. 
you know, uh, again, I'm just have anytime my phone rings, I'm I'm delighted. Right. Uh, and I always make a musical uh, an- analogies, and I uh, to somebody that we both love. I always look at Elvis Costello. You know, Elvis Costello, with the height of his fame, was selling a fraction of what REO Speedwagon sure. was selling. Yeah. And na- and but he still does what he does. Right. And he and he's you know he he plays medium to small right. theaters and is in his music he does an, an album every year yeah, he does play know. stadiums but he can sell out like the Greek theater that kind of yeah, thing. yeah 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 yeah. Right. yeah he plays the, that's what right. I mean like yeah. he's not Springsteen yeah, right but he's still working pays right. his band mm-hmm. yeah. and makes records and you know if you want to hear his music on the radio you have to listen to Underground Garage or you're never going to hear it right but right. he's not on K Rock uh, anymore. Right. Yeah, but he's he barely he gonna, was back then. Back then, but yeah. what's he gonna go do? Go die? Like right. no, he's it's yeah. what he does. Right. No, no. Uh, and that's my attitude. Is like, well, this is what I do. I don't know what else I can do. Yeah, and and like Elvis Costello, there are diehard fans. There are yeah, people and you who have really, your audience, right. and hopefully your audience grows old with you. And and and, and right. you know, you and I have that same observation that. You know, we go to see him every time he comes around, and you see all the same faces, right. and you go like, "Oh, that guy's still around. Oh, why is he dying his hair?" <laughs> right. You know, it's, it's right. Like, you know, it's one, one of the yeah. great things I always uh, feel at a uh, Bruce Springsteen concert is that uh, he starts singing. You know, "I'm born to run. I got the rip the bones from my back. The death trap. I've got to get on these wheels and run." No one in the audience is running anyway. <laughs> There's not a single person who's not going back home in their van. <laughs> To where they yeah. came from. Yeah, There's know, nobody. They're all old. Yeah. They're all stayed. It's a, yeah. an audience full of 60 year old yeah. people who have not given up the sense of adventure completely. Exactly. Like yeah. even going out to see Bruce Springsteen was a little bit of a hassle. It, yeah, it was a pain. <laughs> yeah. It was a pain. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's, that, that's, a, that's a mythos was, that we think we're this young kids and could do. When I was in high school, I thought, oh, yeah, I'm going to get in a fucking car and I'm just going to drive and see where it takes me. Because uh-huh. uh, I was an idiot. Yeah, but now sure. I'm uh, I'm older and I'm not not that interested. You're in desperate nowhere. to get out of Beverly Hills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's so you know, just no, wherever you adventure. Grow, wherever you grow where up, was is wherever the adventure? you grow up. Yeah, where was the adventure happening? That yeah. was my my thing. And I've I've uh, you know that thing of, of being a wonderkind and being. Uh, Appreciated for that is different than being the old guy in the room now, the veteran yeah. writer, and just saying and and not always speaking up when somebody has a terrible idea and yeah. just waiting for it, see where it lands and maybe that person will come around to the better idea or maybe goosing them in a direction that you think might be helpful. But you know you don't. You, not everybody has to learn every lesson every time. I, all the you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's well put and. I find that too with uh, with you know I was on a I was on a show this year and I hope to, I hope it comes back. Um, Which show? Ted. Oh the yeah, Seth MacFarlane show. Okay. Uh, and it was great. And the and the the this, this was the most fun I've ever had. Okay. Ever the staff was like people our age and a lot of the Family Guy and Seth mm-hmm. and Alec, and then Goldie was on the show and then uh, you know some newer people. Mm-hmm. And that were, that were great, and I, of course, went in thinking, okay, they just uh, they're looking at me like the fossil right. at the table, um, and so I was, you know, kind of, again, like what you said, mm-hmm. kind of let them go, and then season gets on, you go out, you hang out, and you get to know them, and they're like, we were so intimidated. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's funny. Right. I didn't have no idea. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm intimidated of Goldie. Like, sure. Like, you know, like a Very Gatling funny. gun. Yeah. And you don't know how people perceive you, but being that that person who uh, – I used to be you, and uh, and I remember looking at the older guys, and now I'm the older guy right. in the room. Is there something that you didn't do – that you still wish you did do or still think you can do, that you want to do, that that's still lingering there, um, directing horror movies or anything that that's still waiting for you? Uh, you yeah, want I want to write a movie, a theatrical movie that gets made. I wrote a couple of movies that are made for TV movies and things that have gotten made. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I, And I am writing a horror movie now, mm-hmm. uh, it's a weird skill. It's a skill set that's 
very similar to writing comedy. Right. Um, and it's where my I'm very passionate about it. And uh, I would love to segue into that career. Yeah. Um, I, would, I think that would be that would be great. Thinking of what's coming forward, what's what what yeah. next is what's helping me get through what I'm changing to be like. Yeah, and that it's a new thing. It's not yeah. like yeah, I want to go back and really get right. into the theater because I mean I I go I to, I do stand up the way people golf. <laughs> you know, it's like right. I love doing it. Mm -hmm. I go out there. Right. I, well, I, you're very good I, at it. Yeah, and it's great to know you can still do an hour, hour and a half. And yeah. uh, if they're nice enough to have me and, you know, great. But, I mean, the material is very sharp. It's always funny. It's really well thought out. I mean, you there's no one who does a smarter set of material than you. And yet, I still work occasionally. <laughs> 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 yeah. It, it, again, it's yeah. like I'm, I'm – uh, it, it's sort of like – when you go to the, you know, having material like that instead nowadays, it's sort of like going to the snack bar at the movies and then there's a, like a kale salad. There's right. like milk duds, popcorn, right. and a kale. Would you like a kale salad? Right. Uh, comedy. How has comedy changed since your starting days in Boston to now? Is there a difference? Yes. It uh, it's, I'll tell you an interesting story about when I started off in Boston, but the, the, the big change is again like like music uh it has become <clears throat> uh balkanized uh there is like you would never put i'll, I'll use old music mm -hmm. like you'd never put elvis costello and keith urban on the same show okay you know i would like, but yeah, or, 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 I understand. Like, or, you yeah. know like if you uh, wanted to build one kind you know, of an audience yeah, yeah. rat right and you wouldn't mm -hmm. put like rat right. and you know, right. or elvis costello in the right. same show but comedy would always do that right but you're all comedians you're all yeah. the same right now there are different schools of of comedy. There is uh, there's a uh, the kind of this weird bro culture. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, a lot of the uh, uh, hugely strong uh, feminine uh, force in stand up comedy that wasn't there when mm -hmm. I was starting out. Right. Uh, most of the funniest new people that I know coming up are women. When, right. When I was starting out, there were like three or four funny women in, right. that you knew of, mm -hmm. you know, not just in the world that right. were famous. Um, and people know, and then with independent, and then there's independent like alt comics, which right. is sort of I'm in that tranche. Um, and people know to go to see their type of comedy. So when you go to the improv, or the, the, aren't you still getting the variety? The improv, of people? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah, the improv and the uh, the improv will have a variety. The store really doesn't have much of a variety, and and on the road, uh, you know, it, people will come to see you, but they won't. Comically, it used to be people would go to the funny farm, right, to see comedy. Mm -hmm. Now they go to who's there. Okay. And if it's like a, a Joe Rogan kind of guy, right. you'll get that crowd. Right. Or if it's me, you'll get my crowd. Mm -hmm. Or if it's, you know, Andrea Jinn or, or like a younger female comedian, mm -hmm. you'll get her crowd. Right. Um, and then I think that's fine. That's right. healthy. It's it's more, but it's more like music. Right. It's like you get you know, and it's funny because I have I just worked in Portland, and with two uh, comics and they said like your audience is so nice <laughs> it's like yeah because they're right. all the Springsteen right. people they're like, exactly you know, they, they're nice people yeah. they yeah, want to the come they're, out they're, laugh. They're, they're, yeah they're parking lots full of minivans I miss everyone the, here has cleaned juice boxes out of a car yeah, exactly I miss the eclectic nature of the other thing yeah where people could just be <clears throat> shoved together in a different variety oh, I think it's healthier yeah but yeah. I also just miss it. I just I, I like it better I like being exposed to more stuff when I was a kid growing up I want to be exposed to everything and I, yeah. I hope that younger people get exposed to more not the bros the bros can fucking have, yeah. have their, their bro yeah. stuff but everybody else yeah should be I, exposed I agree to more. I, I yeah. agree yeah and uh, unfortunately bro culture I don't know if it's more prevalent than it used to be or we just hear about it more uh, you know, it's like we hear about it more. Yeah, it's like you know, cops are as bad as they've always been. We just don't have, we just didn't have cameras on our phones in 1978. Right, and no one, people didn't have the sense of of entitlement and victimization when you were a white guy. The sense that they're the victim that they do now. That's all brand new. 
That's all. Yeah. Old Brian Edwards. And, and we know where that came from. Horrible. Yeah. It's uh, only good places. Yeah. Well, you know, white dudes have had the sh- run of the show for 2,000 years. Right. Did you think they were going to go <laughs> quietly? Right. right. We're not Canadians. Right. No, it's true. It's true. <laughs> you know the old joke, how do you get 20 drunken Canadians out of a swimming pool? Ask them. Yeah, go, guys, could you please leave the pool? <laughs> The nicest. The nicest the people. The nicest people. Yeah. Um, so I'm uh, – thank you for talking about that subject. We have yeah. other questions. The kids, they, they – the, when you when we talked on the phone earlier, yeah. I, was, I was thinking a lot about the, the change I've felt, not personally more than professionally, yeah. which is my kids – as you said about Charlie. Right. My kids don't need me like they used to. Right. I still have a 14-year-old, so right. I'm – thank God. Right, but 14-year-olds um, also often don't – think they need their parents anyway. Yeah. But, but, uh, I have a good one. That's good. <laughs> uh, it could go any day. Right. <laughs> right. But, and Charlie, my son is 21 years old. He's not a kid. Yeah. He's yeah. My a, oldest is 21. He's a man. Yeah. Lulu you know, is 21. He's a man and he can be making decisions. Although my wife continues to treat him like a little boy. Of course. For some reason. I don't understand. No, not of course. Like really, she's like, like, uh, let me pack for you. It's like, you don't have to pack for a 21-year-old man. Yeah. 21-year-old man can pack for himself. Like, yeah. I'm going to go buy you underwear. No, he can buy his own underwear. <laughs> it really is something that he can do. Yeah, he's uh, out of college. Right. He's, is he out he's of college? Not college? He's one more year left. One more year, yeah. One yeah, yeah Lulu is a junior. Uh, so, yeah, he did COVID. He should have been out of college, but right. he did a year of sitting at home complaining. My daughter's in China. Yeah, that's amazing. I can't wrap my head around that. Yeah. Um, so if there's something, do you worry if something went wrong? How would you get there? You know, like hell yeah, I yeah. was gonna fly. I, she's doing a summer course in Mandarin. She is Chinese yes. for people. She is adopted from China. She hasn't been there since she was younger. She went back with us when we got her sisters and things. But uh, you know, this is her first time like there alone right. and program. And I was going to go with her just to make sure she got from the airport. To the dorm. Right. Right. I and, understand that and, instinct. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, I'm fine. Right. <laughs> like, no, right. what are you going to um, Charlie, yeah, it's the same thing. Charlie flew in from England a few days ago, and the plane lands in San Francisco because that's his yeah. school is up north, and then he has to find his own way home. And my wife wanted to go up to San Francisco, meet him, and take him onto the plane to go to yeah. L.A. I said, yeah. He can do it himself. He's yeah. a big boy. It's like, as a matter of fact, he should book his own flight yeah. <laughs> to come back so he has all the information. And if he misses his plane, you know what? He'll figure it out. He'll yeah. get another plane. Yeah. And she, her, our minds were blown, but he actually made it home safe. It was fine. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's it's hard because we still think of him like he is five. Yeah. And I still think of myself like I am 22. And I think I'm, that's universal. Yeah. and it's and, But it's not real. Yeah, I'm a young man in an old man's body. And have you ever, I don't know if you've done this, because you don't really, you don't look too much, you don't look like your dad. No. I, Are you telling me something I, about my dad? Is who my real dad is? No, 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 say, no you don't look, look like your dad. <laughs> what are you saying? Jay, bring him out. <laughs> Oscar LeVant. Boy, do, am I turning into my father physically. Okay. To the point that I was home. Yeah. And a friend of my father said, Jesus, I thought you were your father walking in the door <laughs> when he was 40 years younger. Right. Yeah, it's spooky. As you've gotten older, did uh, you get more uh, comfortable with your family and your father and your parents? And I had better boundaries. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know growing up was tough. Yeah. Yeah. And now I don't uh, – uh, I have great relationships with the uh, them, and but I have as much as I can with them, and I don't, as we like to say in the uh, in recovery, Jay, mm-hmm. I don't go to the hardware store for milk anymore. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, but it's very interesting. My mother has dementia and lives in a nursing facility, mm-hmm. and has no idea who I am, and hasn't for years. Right. Uh, and that's a very strange thing. Does she recognize you as a person that she likes? Doesn't know who I am. And if I walk out of the room and come back in 10 minutes later, she's never seen me before. Right. Um, which makes Christmas shopping a breeze. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but yeah. uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's weird. And yeah. it's like getting, it's like wading into a cold I ocean. have this like, experience with several people who are very close to me. And um, it's a very strange thing to 
not be recognized. It's a very strange thing to not be recognized by your own parent. Yeah. You know, that's like... It's weird. It's it's almost um, feeling like you, a little bit like you're set adrift. Like all the reality that you knew is no longer recognized. So what is reality? It's just have that moment. Yeah. But then you go back to, okay, well... It's I what have, it is. I have, I have the memories if they don't. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And right. I think about my dad because my dad goes to visit her every day. And she knows that she knows him and and is very attached to him but also like he he called me the other day and says i'm here with your mother you know you know my dad's 92 my mom's right. 88 mm-hmm. and i talked to her and they she, she you know they 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 uh they know they should know right. so they go like hi hi mom oh hi right. Yeah, right, i'm right. in california and you like it out there right. you know they don't know yeah yeah that. And then she talking, and she goes, "Okay, well, I'm going to give you back to your uncle Phil." Right, right. Like she doesn't even know who my dad is. No, of course not. But he goes there every day. Right. And I, that's the story. Yeah. Like what he is going through. Right. He, he lived. He's been living with this woman since 1954. Right. And suddenly he doesn't live with her anymore. But she's not dead. Right. But she's there. But just really know who he is. And I said to my brother, I said, what goes through his head? And my brother nailed it. He goes, oh, he loves it because he's atoning for the 70s. Ah, okay. Like, you All got right. that right. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, so he gets a chance to redeem himself. Yeah, he's and he's guy. Catholic and yep. he feels like he's being punished for mm-hmm. what he did. Okay. And in the end, it'll all be even. All right. All right. That's fair. That's yeah, fair. I mean, uh, you know, if you... It's all on brand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, there is something still about the physical person being there, the person you spent your life with, the physical person, even just being there, that's something. That At least that's, there's a somehow a connection there, even if yeah. they're think, saying you're the uncle or the neighbor or whatever the, they think. I'll I'll tell you something that's pretty great and uh, great and uh but also strange uh last time i saw her about a year ago i was with my uh my wife and we went to visit her and my father goes you know who this is and it was at first it was like an abbott and costello bit he goes do you know who this is and um he and she goes no and she goes and he says this is dana and she goes you have a friend named dana and he goes, no, this is our son. She goes, we know two Danes. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, oh. yeah, sure. Yeah. But then she looked at me, after, you know, and suddenly you just like, there was just like, and she just went, what? I love you. Ah. That's and amazing. then for like a minute, yeah. and then it went away. Right. And I kind of like, this is a terrible thing to say. Right. I'm afraid to go back to see her because, uh-huh. like, I had that. Exactly. And I don't want to, you know. No, but, I mean, if you, your mom stared at you and recognized that she loves you. You right. have that. You have that. And I understand that that's something you want to hang on to. Yeah. I guess because. Because like, now I'm afraid, like, she, I'm going to go, like, you prick. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Or just say, Wendell Wilkie. <laughs> like, <laughs> nothing she said made sense at all. Hey, Lewis. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> She doesn't. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but it's. I, I get it, and it's a. It's such a horrible thing to lose someone so slowly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you know, it, 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 it's surprising with dementia people how much they've been faking for so long, and you didn't even know. That's yeah. And they yeah, were yeah, laughing yeah, yeah. and having conversations with and and figuring a way to get along without being able to remember fucking anything. Yeah. And that's that's also amazing. So you don't even know how long they've been gone. Yeah, because they hide it. Yeah. They cover they, they cover it up. Yeah. 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 I've got to build those skills right now. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, I'm knows. already like that. Hey, yeah. buddy. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's, the name thing is, uh, is is very problematic for me. Hey, very me problematic. Too. Me too. Uh, people I've worked with for years. I once blanked on my sister-in-law's name at a party. Yeah. That's, and she was my sister-in-law. Yeah, I get it. Uh, I get uh, it. Uh, who are you again? I, I, and especially <laughs> when I'm nervous and I'm going to get everybody. Yeah, name. yeah, yeah. I'm the same way. Uh, so, Dana, we have a section on this, a segment on this show called Question Time, where I take 
uh, about 126 computer-generated questions. Okay. And these are delivered and, to you through the uh, cybernetics? Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, uh, L. Ron Hubbard has delivered this straight to me. Uh, so That's Dianetics. Oh, shit. I've got it wrong. Uh, Dr. Uh, cybernetics is Dr. Rudy Wells. Oh, okay. Bionic Institute. Very nice. Well, it's like that, um, except uh, nothing costs $6 million here. Uh, so... You have to pick a letter between A and G and a number between 1 and 18, and I will give you the question that we are going to ask. G7. G is the category of big questions. Okay, this is a big question. Dana Gould, what is the nature of consciousness? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you picked it. <laughs> wow. You picked it. The nature of The nature of consciousness. In other words. Can I call my lifeline? <laughs> we are. Uh, I'll con contextualize it for you. We may not fully exist. We may right. be images or things. We may be brains uh, in a jar. We may be things. But okay. I may be a fictional dream. I may be a dream. Right. Whatever. But no matter what, you have consciousness. You are the thing that you're thinking. The thing that's yeah. going through your brain right now right. is, despite whatever sensory information you're getting, it's consciousness. Right. So given that, what is the nature of consciousness? Okay, I would think that the nature of consciousness is a, a, a grasp of the concept that uh, the self exists and that it relates to the exterior world in a certain way. Wrong. All right, next question. No, no, that's a, that's a very good answer. That's a very legitimate answer. Yeah. And philosophically speaking, all, sometimes all I, we have I is consciousness. I hate to once again quote Star Trek the motion picture. Sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> right, sure. But, but, but it's the... Uh, it's all there is. That's the Bible. Yeah. yeah. It's all there, yeah. The worst Star Trek is Star Trek, the motion picture. Yes. That, that first Star Trek movie was... Well, actually, no. The second worst Star Trek is Star Trek, the motion picture. The I would argue that Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. Oh, uh, maybe. Is, is maybe. pretty I was pretty so bad. disappointed with Star Trek, the motion oh, picture. Oh, it was like The Phantom Menace. It was like, <laughs> this isn't good. <laughs> <laughs> it's so sad. This doesn't work. A 20-minute... 20 minute where this the enterprise is sort of going around well, I could I could tell you why that movie's bad because I've I've read so many books about it so. okay well it was just no conflict right no villain right no so right it's not a movie about a story it's a movie about an idea what right. if a machine became conscious mm -hmm. great that's an idea right it's not a story right I also think that uh, Gene Roddenberry gets a lot of credit for stuff that maybe he shouldn't fully get Oh yeah, and that's and that that's something that fascinates me is to people who worked for uh, at the Simpsons, where everybody sort of wants to put one person's name up there, and Matt Groening, who is a very nice, very, very nice talented guy. guy, but it's always been a gigantic machine of hundreds, hundreds of, people of people making something, and I think Star Trek is one of those things where you. Here's the name. Here's it, the guy. Yeah. And it's so many other people who make it either good or bad. Yeah, it's just it's easier for people to just put it there and go like, well, he, he comes up with everything. Right. But you're a super fan of many things. And mm -hmm. so don't aren't we the exact people who are doing that? Like looking at one person and saying, oh, my God, you know, uh, that I'm, I'm going to fan out on that one person as opposed to realizing the collaborative nature. Well, of I art. like to find out the other people. Right. Like, you know, like, but there's a thing of the creator's dilemma where eventually the creator has to be removed from his creation because he can't leave it alone. Right. And, and he doesn't know what it is. Doesn't know what it is. Yeah. yeah. I find that like Seinfeld is the perfect example of that to me where, where uh, Larry, David, um, made this incredible show that everybody loved, and and then he left for a couple of years. Yeah, uh, and then he only came back to do the finale. And when he came back to do the finale, I had no idea what the show was. He, he he thought the show was about four terrible, terrible people. So the finale makes sense that it's going to be four terrible people right. get their come up and go to jail, and they're really they're so shitty they deserve every shitty thing that happens to them. What right. he doesn't realize, and never really realizes, is. Seinfeld is about four people we like. Yeah. And four people who have flaws, for sure. Sure. But are charming in their own way. And and that charm fully escaped the creator of it. Yes, and I've never thought of that before. Well, that, that's, that's why that's I'm true. a genius yeah. and you're an idiot. That's true. That's true. So I'm giving but, you but wisdom. But it's also like, I, I think that uh, I know that Jim Brooks would come into the room and tell us something about the show, and he would leave, and I would go, has he seen the show? <laughs> <laughs> right. Because it's like it's not about Homer apologizing to Marge every week. Right. But what Jim brought to the show, it seemed, was he kept 
uh, and I, you know, I think the other guys do it. Matt tries to do it too. Is kept the humanity oh, uh, the, he, on the forefront of that show. And he, yeah, and and he was amazing. Like he would correct things exactly. Like, like he would go, "That's too much." Right. And like <laughs> we had a big run where Homer was chloroforming everyone. <laughs> <laughs> right. But when he chloroformed Marge, Jim went bananas. And <laughs> we thought he was crazy. And it turns out he was right. <laughs> right. The people don't want to see that. <laughs> it's true. I, I was corrected by Jim Brooks. There was an episode that we did uh, a couple different <laughs> things. One was, was, for some reason, Homer was shopping for a casket. And we yeah. were at a place where, and we called one casket the Conquistador. We oh, sure, I remember, things. I remember. Yeah. And we had bumper stickers that we we said were available on casket. And one of them was, don't laugh, your daughter's in here. And, he's, oh, yeah. and he said, that's horrible. <laughs> you can't do that. So his daughter's in a casket. That's horrible. And we're all, you know, 24 and Because none of you have kids. Exactly. Yeah, you yeah. didn't have kids. We didn't care. Um, and it's like, it's all really fun and games. Ha, ha, ha. And then, uh, which... Things yeah. change when you're you're a parent. Oh. Yes, I'm. Well, I'm responsible. I don't want to. If 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 anything goes on my tombstone, it's that I am responsible for the first on-screen suicide in the history of The Simpsons. Okay. <laughs> to which, after the table read, Matt Groening turned to me and said, 14 seasons without a suicide. Thanks, Dana. <laughs> One of the very first episodes we wrote was Homer about to commit suicide. He tied yeah. a big rock to, his, to, a, uh, to a rope, mm-hmm. and the rope attached to his neck, and he was going to throw it off. So we uh, had attempted suicides mm-hmm. from the very beginning. Now, I, I have to give it credit. I was... Uh, uh, I think George Meyer actually came up with it in the in the story pitch. But uh, yeah, Moe's bartending teacher uh, <laughs> kills himself. <laughs> yeah, he, it's George Plimpton did the uh, it was a George Plimpton kind of mm-hmm. guy. And right. He goes. He went back to Swizzlemore. Like it was this right. Ivy League bartending school, and uh, he's looking at the at a pond, and he goes, uh, "Look at the way the reflection of the leaves dance on the water. I love how they dance so." I'm dying, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> and then he ends up just walking into the thing, <laughs> like Bruce Dern right. at the end of coming home, and then the and, and then what's hilarious is Mo goes, "Hey, you get, hey, you're gonna get your shoes wet." Oh, <laughs> oh, and then it's like eleven of the, right. oh, 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 <laughs> really great, right. oh, classic. But classic. again, uh, that's a great example. My episode. George Meyer has this right. idea One, what right. if, what about the, that I'm dying mode. That was all George. Mm-hmm. Hank Azaria does this great extended at the table reading. Right. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, right. oh, dad, no, keep that, keep that. It's it's all, A everybody puts stuff in. It's not right. just any one person. But when I was 10, just, there's. There it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Good job. Uh, when I was 10, I just thought it was the one guy. Sure. The one guy. George Lucas. Yeah. Just amazing. He's a genius. He's everything. Mm-hmm. And part of uh, growing up still to this day, I have to remind myself, it's not the one guy. And I'm. Uh, it's okay to be part of that team and all that. Other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, less, one more big, one more question. Give me a letter and a number. Well, a I letter. did so well last a time. Through, you did. A through, a through G. How about and this? These are computer generated. Well, these are these are the, things that we want to fight. Uh, the WGA is fighting against, but we're using. Well, let's let's go with the vitamin B twelve. B twelve. Okay. Uh, the category that you have chosen is history, uh, mm-hmm. and meaning life history. Uh, and the the question is, what role does exercise or physical activity play in your life, and how does this contribute to your overall sense of joy and well being? Oh, that's that uh, great. Uh, it plays a big part All in right. my life well, because really hot Pilates. Yeah, I'm vain. Yeah, I'm very vain, and I mean I look like a shoe. But <laughs> you look fine, Dana. You look no, fine. but I mean just like I'm not a handsome dude. I like I'm look like a regular person. You've got a smoking like, hot wife. It doesn't really matter. That's inexplicable, and no, <laughs> I, it's like whatever she did in a past life. <laughs> I think she was the Roman that stabbed Jesus. Um, she's paying for it now. It's all good. It's all good. But. Uh, I want. I feel. But you're not an ugly man. Do you think you're an ugly man? You say you look no, like not, a shoe. No, not ugly at all. But like, right. I'm, when I say I'm vain, I'm not like I don't think I'm Ryan Reynolds. I'm just no. like I just want to be no. 
physically in yeah. shape and, and limber mm-hmm. and, you know, uh, and you feel your body like, ooh, it right. takes me longer to get up. You're not as in denial as, as much in denial as I am because I don't feel my body ever. Oh, yeah, I haven't no. in my entire life. I don't know anything about what's going on in my body. Well, I was a very fat kid with four older athlete brothers. So right. I just imagine that. Yeah, they punched and, the fat out of you. Well, they punched the esteem right. out of me, exactly. the right. self-esteem right. out of me. And so when I feel like I'm out of shape, my self-loathing becomes intolerable yeah. and I become a miserable person. Yeah, if that so, ever happens to you again, call me. I will. I will I'll make do. it completely tolerable. <laughs> Shockingly <laughs> tolerable to be out of shape and, uh, and, and delight really, yourself. Yeah, do, just be fine with yourself. Yeah. No, I can't. And right. I, uh, uh, so I, I have to be very, I exercise, but also is for mental health. Yeah. Um, They found that talk therapy and physical exercise is equitable to talk therapy and psych and and meds. Okay. Uh, I'm on all three. Right. Sure. (laughs) Right. Right. Um, But But yeah, uh, don't knock meds. Meds are great. No, no. I'm. I'm. I, my friend, I've been on meds since 1994, and Mm -hmm. they have made my life completely livable. Yeah, that's great. Uh, And. uh, but you have to find an exercise that you like or yes. that you're willing to do. That and you're that, willing to do, yeah. That's always been hard for me. I found that, and this is the, the old man version of exercise, walking in the hills. No, wrong with it. That's if what I, I do. If I can listen to something, yeah. great. That's, yeah. that's my exercise, yeah. walking and, in the hills. And you are hell, like, we hold ourselves to a completely fictional standard of what we're supposed to look like. I guess. I don't really hold myself to the Ryan Reynolds standard. But but, but in you terms are. of but people people on TV, I didn't know this. So we were talking about Star Trek. I didn't know this. Star Trek the Next Generation in the first I think two seasons, mm-hmm. they had these completely form fitting like jumpsuits. Mm-hmm. They had basically body girdles with musculature over it. Because Gene Roddenberry had this thing, in the future, it's all utopia. Sure. And everybody's going to be in perfect shape. So these people, nobody looked like that. Right, right. And, you know, and when I became a father of daughters, I really became aware of that. Like, right. You know, these, How have you helped them, like, the, the body issue thing for, for girls is so huge. And with social media, have they succumbed to any of that? Or have they, have they has their self-esteem did, been just... Strong enough and separated enough that that's not a problem? Uh, one of my daughters I thought was not in the best shape. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to a, a woman psychologist, not just a woman I knew. I would never go to a woman psychologist. <laughs> no, of course. <laughs> Ridiculous. A woman treating a man. <laughs> I mean, maybe a psychologist's wife or mistress. <laughs> sure. But I said, I don't know what to say to her. And she said, you say nothing. Right. You love her. It doesn't matter. And that was the best advice. I was Absolutely. Like, I've never said a word. Like, right. You yeah. just hire somebody to criticize she, her from the yeah. outside. But she's like, is she out of shape? She knows. Yeah. Yeah. Need you to tell. And boy, yeah. I remember every I remember every comment my dad made about my body. Right. Everyone. That and my dad too. And it was sort of like yeah. didn't didn't make me want to lose weight. No. Nope. Ever. Just made me hate him a little bit. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it was it was a uh, uh, tough. But that's but good. I love seeing that go away. Like you really do see in advertising different body types and different yeah. it's starting. Yeah, a little starting. Little a little. Bit. Yeah. So but people and still it, like to look at pretty people. And, nothing, and there's nothing wrong yeah, with that. Yeah. But but pretty is, uh, you know, pretty comes in different shapes and sizes. Right. It's a subjective yeah. thing. It's and a it's subjective a societal thing. standard. And if that yeah. standard can be widened yeah. and broadened, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, I blah. still want to look at the hotties. You sure. know what I'm saying? Sure. I'm not wrong. At, oh, yeah. I became an asshole for a second. I, as, the, as the editor of Cannes Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was, there must have been a... Where there's jugs are selling well. Cans, cans <laughs> was the cracked to. I, to was cans mag- a real magazine? magazine? No, but it should have been. That's, yes, that's yeah, yeah. To say it would have that'll yeah. be uh to to if mad if jugs was mad then right. cans would have been cracked. I was doing the me. Where am I going? The Me Too period. I always thought it would be funny like to say like what what's going well my magazine shut down. Like, uh, what was your magazine? Shut up, whore magazine. <laughs> Some reason this was not the right time for that. There is a. You know, you, you see, you talk about like g- getting older and stuff. Like, like I'll see a comedian that's coming up, and they'll have just like a great, you know, bit, and, and it, it makes you feel like, oh, good. 
oh, great. Right. There's, there, yeah, I'm not threatened by it at all. Right. It's like when I'm not comparing myself to this person, but like when Pete Townsend saw The Clash. Right. He was like, thank God. Yeah. There's somebody. Yeah. Uh, and I don't even know the joke, but the premise is brilliant. A comedian named Drew Landry has been a bit of a because Hugh Hefner died a month before Me Too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he knew. Like, right. Guys, I got to get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, uh, not. Not soon enough, I think. It, was like, <laughs> yeah, it seemed. Say, so got really old and really sad. Oh, for I want to. I want to do the doc about the last two years. Uh, uh, yeah, that's. I've got seventeen girlfriends. Like, do you? Yeah. Do you really have seventeen girlfriends, or yeah. are they caretakers? Like, yeah. what's going on with you? Like nobody who saw. Did you see Cry Macho? Yes. I like no one's like. I want to see what that guy is doing in the sack. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. Yeah. And and like, give, him, to, give him his ton of leaves. Right. <laughs> which leads me to another question. How much time did I have in my hands that I would watch Cry Macho? I see everything that guy does. I do too, but it's yeah. like, uh, they're not all good. They're not all good. Oh, no. They're, yeah. Yeah. they're by, the, by the way, he was old and unforgiven. And that yeah, was 1992. Yeah. Well, the, like, remember, like, I didn't really, Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull came out in 2008. Yes. People are older longer. They're old for longer periods it's of time true. now. It's true. Well, that's, I think that's maybe good news for us. It is. I want to be old, but not be so old that I'm a, insane and can't move. Well, insane wouldn't be so bad because you don't know you're insane. I'd I'm be the assuming, insane, yeah. insane, insane yeah. kind who's like, I know I'm insane. Oh, that would yeah. be aw- that would be hell on earth. But yeah, that's what I don't like is the physical infirmity. I, I know that you're trying to end this, but let no. me ask you this question. Did you see Indiana Jones? Uh, not yet. I want to see with my son, who is at home with COVID. Oh, and so, oh I'm yes, so sorry. Yes, it's all right. I, it's the new mild COVID that I, doesn't matter, yeah, but I, I just want to see yeah. it. I want to see it with my kid. I loved it. Yeah, I hear I hear it's very good. I loved it. And people, oh, I hear it's terrible. Well, yeah, for people that thought it was yeah. terrible before they walked right. in the theater. There's nothing a movie called Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny should right. have that this movie doesn't have. And that have. guy's a great director. He's and really Terrence good. Ford is great. Yeah. Like, it's all good. Yeah. It's like, yeah, he can't yeah. help that he's 80. It's right. not his fault. Right. And, and he's good at 80. <laughs> I actually I'm, think he's I terrific. If I look like him when I'm 70, I'll be I was euphoric. watching the 18, uh, or 1923, the, yeah. the the thing that he's on with the, with the, uh, the Yellowstone prequel. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. He's good. He's fine. I'm interviewing uh, on my little podcast uh, a guy named Bill Corso, mm-hmm. who's a makeup artist, who is Harrison Ford's makeup artist. Oh, great. Who not only did his makeup, but supervi- built the software and supervises the de-aging. Oh, that's so amazing. So it's the same guy. Okay. Well, people that, say it looks pretty good. It's fantastic. Yeah, great. That's but, but that's a really brilliant thing. It's like it's the same guy on set. Right. Is in the tra- is in the editing because like, he knows what he looks like yeah. more than anybody. Yeah. No, I, really I, 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 I think Harrison Ford is the coolest. He's kind of a neighbor of mine. I never talked. Oh, to you're him, kidding. But, yeah. yeah. But I, but I think he's very very cool. Yeah. Um, a question I want to ask you about your girls. Uh, in terms of their social interactions with people, you know, like my, my I feel like kids. I teach college. I see. I feel like kids are much more isolated than they were, mm-hmm. even in college and anywhere else. I've, have you had to do any work to help get your girls, you know, hanging out with friends or talking more and say, having more in-person time with people? Or is it all just phone stuff? Or is it they just social creatures anyway? They're social creatures anyway. I'm, I'm, I'm a very uh, kind of hands-off in terms of their socialism, because mm-hmm. I don't, because I was an idiot. Right. I was like, don't do, you know. Right. Um, they have, uh, they have friends and they go, but but they're, they're in their phone all the right. time. But I think that they're in their phone all the time the way we were in front of the TV all the time. Like, okay. Where I was like, they're in front of the TV all day. Right. And I think, well, I grew up normally, but you do this. I mm-hmm. think it's just, this is, this is who, this is human beings, the 76th upgrade. So you, you know? think this is just time, how pet time passes as opposed to social interaction? I think so, yeah. I, or evolution, like just the way humans interact with technology. Right. Is something that you know they they will be freaked out that their kids are always looking at the screen that's implanted into their wrist. You know, <laughs> right. it's like right. I had to carry a phone around all the time. <laughs> right, um, and I think that's just the way it goes. Right. But no, the no, AI will have killed us all by then. Oh, anyway, God willing, fine. yeah, that's good. They are. Uh, they all have. 
uh, really great friends and they have stuff outside of the house. You know, they're yeah. not like shut-ins. My oldest daughter's uh, a, a, a paleontologist. Of course. You know? And, uh, <laughs> and uh, that's what she's doing, right. you know, and that's her, she's passionate about right. it. Right. Works, it goes to Berkeley, it att- works in the, is a ju- going into junior year. Right. Works in the museum, uh, micro, like doing microscopic scanning of fossils. Yeah. Loves it. Like, uh, my other daughter's really into ballet. My other daughter's, uh, my middle daughter is going in, the only one going to show business um, and is doing script coverage this summer. And, uh, you know, so they all are doing stuff the and they have passions right. and they're, yeah, that's great. Yeah. But that's they, great. they are into gaming the way we were into music and movies. Wow. Like people now, and this is something Eddie Gordetsky said, I'm quoting him. Mm-hmm. People pl- put their fantasy versions of themselves, like in the way we would put it into music or movies, right. into gaming. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I have, basically, I don't do much gaming. I used I don't, to. I do none. I did some, but it was really taking up a lot of time. And I, I understand and I, that, and yeah. I, I, I said I can eliminate that from my life. But I was the voice of a video game in the late 90s, and people still... Every week I'm on the road, I will get what game? Gex. Okay. <clears throat> which was did three iterations right. on some platform, and every week, nice. I get a cartridge to sign. <laughs> yeah, That's it's awesome. crazy. It's crazy. I'll well, never understand it. We're coming to a close, Dana. Mm-hmm. Um, and when we do the end of the show with something called Bring the Joy, so we're going to bring. Uh, what a recommendation! Something that brings you joy. Something that brings me joy. We can go. Who you can go first? I can go first. It's up to you. Okay. Well, uh, this is uh, this is something uh, that I would recommend. Recommend. To people. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that in terms of uh, the the Twitter of it all. Yeah. And I don't mean just Twitter. Yeah. I mean just like the internet and the new social like, media. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You engaging is a choice. Right. That you don't have to make. Like if something says something something on Twitter or something like, you don't have to dive into that pool. Right. Uh, you can turn away. Right. And not involve yourself. Right. Because it is an outrage machine. <laughs> right. By design. Yeah, that's how they get their money. Yeah. And you don't have to participate in that. I'm right. on, you know, it's like, did you say? No, I didn't. And you know what? Everything's fine. Right. Well, it's interesting. A lot of people have been talking lately about things they're not doing anymore. Mm-hmm. What they're not watching, what they're not doing, like not playing video games, not participating in, in things for their own sanity. Yeah. For, to save their time, to save their energy, and to save their sanity. Yeah. I mean, 2020 took a lot out of a lot of people. Yeah. It was, as they say, an anus horrible. Mm-hmm. But uh, a horrible year. Horrible well, year. Horrible year. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, uh, you know, we're all worried that uh, that president will return yeah. or somebody worse because, you know, yeah. what we could get is that but competent. Although a lot of my listeners are MAGA. So if you MAGA guys, I'm totally yeah. pro trip pro- He's my man. He's my man. <laughs> he's don't, my guy. Don't knock don't, my Donnie. Don't, don't knock. He's the best. Um, and if that happens, <laughs> yeah. we'll just have to find a way to deal. That's my money. That's the cash cow. I can't shut uh, up. Believe me, that's where it could be. <laughs> but, uh, but that you know, I think and we're all worried that we're going to have to deal with that again. Yeah. By leaving? By leaving the country? I don't know. That's I Rob just, Cohen's looking for property in Canada. He's, he's there now. Yeah, I know. Um, so. I was just in Sweden, uh, where my uh, wife's family is, and every single person, one, everybody speaks English. Right. Which is, it just, it was, I was just ashamed of myself. Right. Because I don't know. My wife speaks Swedish. I don't. Everybody says the same thing about America. Yeah. It's just like. What happened? No, no it's always the same thing. The guns. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's the only thing. This is the guns. We don't we don't understand it. And yeah. I'm like, well, I'm with you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think everybody who buys a gun should also be forced to uh, strap dynamite to their chest. Yeah. and so it's basically it's the same thing. It's like, the same thing. Have yeah. a have dynamite at the access. Everybody carry dynamite with you yeah, everywhere it, you go and see what happens. See the good things that come. And it's to you know it's not you know as long as the people just and you can't argue with Second Amendment. Yeah, Second Amendment. Well, that can be interpreted many ways. Yeah, you know. 
Uh, my joy this week, I get to say my joy. My joy this week is listening to different music that I wouldn't ordinarily listen to oh. and finding something I like about it. In other words, I'll sure I have my go-tos, but I get really concerned that I'm not bringing more in, more input that, mm -hmm. I, that I don't normally get. So I try to listen to music that I wouldn't ordinarily listen to uh, or books that I wouldn't ordinarily see or movies that I wouldn't ordinarily see oh, or some other kind of input that's off my radar. And that even goes to, you know, watching The Real Housewives, if that's what, you know, which I don't normally see. So, something strange. What is the music that you, like new music that you've been exposed to that you really like? Uh, well, oddly enough, I have not been listening to oldies in a while and I turned, I had a long car ride uh -huh. and I listened to this 70s station and it was like deep cuts. Uh -huh. It wasn't, Right. The hits. And I, I heard about 40 songs I'd never heard before oh, in my great, life great. that I should have heard growing up with. Right. That but there were wife, deep cuts. That my, my, my wife knew. So, you don't know this song? Yeah, I do not know this song. Oh, yeah, and I'm a guy yeah. who thinks I know everything about music, and I don't know everything about every cut of every song. Sure, sure. And so that was a pleasure to hear a lot of that stuff. It's also a pleasure to hear the... Um, the thing that I never gave a chance to, that I finally gave, was, it's not such a stretch, is the Elvis Costello Spanish album. Oh, I haven't heard it. I haven't it's, heard it yet. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, no, <laughs> it's all those, it's, yeah, it's I mean, really good. I, I have it. I it's buy all those, it. It's all those songs. It's in Spanish. I imagine Pump It Up in Spanish is fantastic. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. It's, it has a different thing, and there's different singers, so it feels yeah. new. I'm a big, I'm a sucker for covers. So anybody who interprets something in a different way that I knew in one way, mm -hmm. that I now know in a different way, that also is just... Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's a great thing. Yeah. Uh, who's a new artist that you that you really like that would be considered um, a new artist? 